What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action packed content related to growing your app downloads and your revenues. And welcome to another weekly YouTube Friday live stream where we kind of look at all your apps and we help you answer any questions. And today I've got a phenomenal guest with me right here, Andre Peshkov. He is the creator of Super Mama. Now, if you guys have been watching this week in and week out, we actually audited Super Mama back on October 2nd of 2020. And Andre took some of my advice, which I look back, Andre, and I was like, Steve, you're kind of harsh, <laughs> which I'm glad you're here to kind of walk me through like where the market opportunity is for this app like this, and then walk us through what he did from that app audit, some of the changes he made, and how he's able to 3x his LTV and 12x his revenue. So without further ado, Andre, welcome to the live stream, my friend. Hi, Steve. Thank you. Hey, Andre, I want to start off with this because I was looking back on the live stream and the audit and I was kind of thinking through what I said. One of the things I said was, I don't know if there's a huge market for an app like this. How did you take it and how do you feel about this market? Uh, you should just estimate the market. I just I want to analyze how many downloads and how many searches in App Store we have, first first of all, and second, how many uh, newborns in the world. Uh, that's why I try, just want to try to uh, cover that market because you never should estimate the market by your own vision. I think it's, it's maybe false. Yeah, I'm glad you said it because when I, I know one of the things I was like, man, Steve, you're kind of harsh on this. But I, one of the things I pointed out was like, I'm like, well, I used it for a little bit. And then I was like, I stopped using it. And so you were like, hey, you still believe in this market. And we're going to share some of those numbers. And I, I admittedly was wrong because the numbers look phenomenal. And so for you guys, just as a reminder, here is Super Mama. One of the things I wanted to walk before you get into your changes, Andre, was you actually updated your screenshots too. That was part of the changes that I noticed from the first time I looked at the app to, to now. Of course, of course, we work on ASO also. It's my it's one of the main uh, channels to promote organic search. Okay, and I, I love this this new one because this, this seems new and I love that you changed all this text too, but this social proof right here with the 250,000 downloads, 4.9 stars, and then you changed some of the messaging to rather than I think before I have the screenshot, but before it was just about like, you know, breast pumping and keeping track of that. But now it's more of, hey, keep everything that you want to know about your baby. It's all in one. Yes. Yeah. So here we, here. we will just keep testing. Right here. Here's your old one mm -hmm. that I pulled from the, the previous app audit. And then I love the new screenshots that you have right now. So here's whoops. Uh, I need to. <laughs> actual size. Okay. Here's the actual size, but it was log breastfeeding set reminders, log pumping. And then you just went with like, keep everything tracked, which I love the messaging now better. Thank you. Thank you. Are you seeing, you. did you see a difference in conversion rates and downloads after making some of these adjustments? Yes. And we keep testing because uh, in different countries, surprisingly for me, it different um, events are popular. For example, it's mm. diapers, or breastfeeding, and we try to cover not only uh, all market. For example, we try to make screenshot for US specifically or for Australia specifically. Got it. I like that, man. All right, let's say hi to a few people, and then we'll get into your slides that you prepare for us. Mm -hmm. Hi to Thank Joe. You. Always good to see you. Branded Brothers Gaming. Good to see you. I think I've seen that name around. Ram. Always good to see you, man. Bianca. I love that we have a family here. We're just having breakfast together every Friday. And then Rich from India, maybe you're having dinner and supper. All right. And Powell is here from Poland. Where are you, Andre? From Russia. Russia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Close by. And then Andy, what's happening in SoCal? All right. Andre, I'm going to pull up your screen. You want to pull up the slides and then we'll share yes. some of the changes you yes. made. Yes. Yes. Guys, 12x revenue, 3x lifetime value. Really phenomenal stuff. Okay. Here we go. Uh, you have the stream yard, Andre. So I want, I didn't want mm -hmm. to like, loop. There you go. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Uh, as Steve previously said, uh, super mom app is a just not just smart helper for new moms. Here's our KPIs. 
we not only increase our revenue or LTV, we also work on our customer acquisition cost. This also was our main goal because uh, it's very hard to promote app. So uh, in our strategy, we have three main goals, product, promotion, and monetization. Um, not only product is the main thing to develop because it, today it's very easy to build the product, but it's very hard to promote how to get in the user hands. And third one, of course, is monetization, monetization side, how you uh, earn. And on the promotion, we always focus on re, uh, return on investment. After many tests, we let go Facebook ads, mm. Google ads, Pinterest ads, social marketing we test in Instagram and Pinterest. But uh, I should admit it only for now. Uh, we keep testing and testing. And we for now, we kept uh, ASO, Facebook's, uh, Facebook ads in chosen countries, and um, uh, Apple search ads, and mm. we use the keyword boost. Mm. Of course, it's all uh, helicopter view because on each topics, uh, we can talk about how we do that, how we uh, test ASO, uh, Apple search test, and how we test the Facebook, why we uh, some countries sh uh, should let go and other country kept. Okay. And well, I do want to get into that a little bit, but mm -hmm. I want you to share the product difference, but I, I'll, I'll, we'll come back to asking you questions about the, uh, the what you kept and what you didn't. Mm -hmm. Let's come back to that later mm -hmm. on. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, second one, on the product side, we uh, focus on retention. Mm. Customer development is the main thing. Uh, it just simply talk to users. But customer development is not only that tool. Uh, if you watch YouTube or Google it, there's many tools that you, could, you can use to understand your user better. But uh, like famous quote from Henry Ford, if I ask my user what they want, they want a faster horse. You should have your product vision. You should know what you want to build. And so you have features from the customer, feature from your product vision, and you should know how to prioritize them. It's very, very crucial because it's very expensive to, to build the feature. Before, in our company, we just uh, said, it's easy to kill the feature before develop it. Uh, and uh, second one, it's data-driven approach. Um, but um, we slightly mo modify them because if you uh, base your decision only on data, you can achieve only local maximum for your product. So we uh, use the data-informed approach. So you use data, but decision that you made is made by yourself. You should, of course, you should uh, look at the data and competitor analysis. You should know your competitors. Um, and you, because not only know the feature that they don't have or uh, they want to build, you should build the product 10 times better than uh, your, uh, your, uh, than, that your uh, competitors have. On monetization side, we focus on uh, LTV and customer acquisition cost. It's just bullet point. It's never too early. Uh, implement monetization. Of course, you test. You should test. Test all things that you implement and raise the prices. You should know and understand your business model because uh, promotion. Because promotion depends on the business model that you have. For example, it's subscription based or advertisement. Uh, I think it's hard to use. Um, Paid channels. If you if you uh, if your monetization based only on advertisement, uh, of course you should know your unit economic. Your uh, movement should be profitable. And uh, as you know, uh, Steve, I'm uh, ex chief financial officer. Without how can I build a product without financial modeling? You should can and must forecast what you have built. Uh, I think year. Would be would be good for your product, mm. and uh, I. The, if you have any question, maybe we should talk. And uh, next slides I uh, have with the, our case study with onboarding flow and subscription. 
Yep. So, I mean, your revenues, I think you were saying per for the month of January, thank you for being so open and honest, were $6,000, which is 12x mm -hmm. more than the year before. So you're looking at, because you come from a CFO background, you're looking at the year over year numbers. Uh, no, we look at it in month over month. Oh, course. month over month. Okay. Yes. No, Great. but th th this, uh, because um, uh, this feature that we implement was uh, in the last month onboarding a subscription, but it's not, oh, was yeah. work only in month. It's hard work uh, with the last year. Yeah. Okay. No, let's get into it. Let's get in. Mm -hmm. I, I love this stuff and I love the examples you're about to show. So let's get into this and then we'll go back into w some of the promotion stuff that's working okay. well for you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, onboarding. Uh, what our objectives was? We want to increase our conversion to purchase. Of course, we want to increase our engagement. We want some filtering uh, mm -hmm. in users. We want to increase retention and understand user better. What do you mean by filtering? Um, I, I explain later because our okay. onboarding process was become much harder. And we have. I noticed filter. that. <laughs> yes, I yes. That. Okay. Uh, it's it's something controversial that you see because okay. um, our old onboarding flow was rather simple. It's only five screen. Yep. You see it on the screen, and the main goal was to um, provide user at the dashboard as fast as possible. Right. But our new onboarding uh, is much different. We want to engage user. We want to retain user. We want to use it no, uh, uh, no much better. And in first screen, you see we have welcome screen. We talk about privacy in our app, and we ask user about what they have achieved, what how we can help our user, and then we engage users with the more data that they provide to us with the, with, with uh, their babies. Hi, photo. Uh, birthday and so on mm -hmm. and, and then what we have uh, if user don't want to use our app they don't interested uh, they um, uh, go away from our app but if uh, this onboarding process they fill in they more engaged than previous one mm. because uh, um, all app that we compete are free you should understand our market all um, all our competitors, mostly of them, are free, and they are rather old. Uh, I think most most famous that have uh, hundred thousand of downloads. I think seven or eight years old, and uh, it's hard to compete with uh, with, the, with them with the prices and with the with the onboarding process. So we uh, try to achieve another goal. We want to user. Uh, feel that we care that our onboarding process that our main data that we collect is totally uh, totally private and uh, user feel more engaged and private yeah hey, that's our new onboarding slide process. Up a little bit mm -hmm. i like i like a mm -hmm. few things that i wanted to point out to the the can you set up one more so I love the uh -huh. the new screen, right? Like I think this you have it in this the first screenshot, and I love this first screen too. It kind of just regurgitates what you do, and I like the way that you sort of analyze this. That hey, because our process, our onboarding screen went from five to now thirteen screens. We really want the power user. We want you to leave. If you leave, we know you're probably not going to pay and you're looking for a free option. So go check out our competitors. But because you're going through this stuff and you care about your baby's weight, your head circumference, the height, everything, that you're going to more be a power user who's very much engaged and wants to develop. And so I love that you're filtering. That's what I guess yes. that's what you mean by you're filtering. Yes, your users. yes, you cool. totally get that right. Yes. All right. Uh, next one. And uh, of course, after that, um, we go on subscription screen. Oh, Andre, uh, one second. Did you see a, a huge drop off? Like what, what were with this new onboarding mm -hmm. screen? What were some of the numbers that changed? Uh, interesting. Uh, we don't see a drop off of, of our users because the main thing was not um, conversion on the onboarding process. The main thing was uh, retention on the first day. Uh, the drop off was previous one was on the retention on the first day in the main goal was to increase retention on the first day uh, that i don't see uh, if i took um, 
onboarding process fault and new one we don't see the drop off okay it, it, it was surprising you, it was surprising also for me are you seeing a higher retention because of this new yes onboarding? yes yes i see the higher retention and the higher uh, conversion i talk about this later okay mm -hmm. and uh after old uh, old uh, onboarding process, we show them uh, subscription. Uh, mm -hmm. It was <laughs> easy subscription screen. Um, uh, thanks to you, we show them all after uh, after onboarding flow. Uh, you see some social proof and two prices for our subscription. Right. Uh, then look at our new one. Hold on one second on that one. I remember saying, so you you did have it during the app audit. You did have this subscription page during the onboarding process, which we promote. But I remember saying on that, the the op app audit, I was like, I don't know what's free and what's paid. So mm -hmm. before we, now let's take a look at the new one, which I think mm -hmm. is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. It all, my team, not for, not me. <laughs> uh, no, it's all me. Okay, I'll take credit, Andrea. It's all me, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, subscription screen. Uh, I there is a two different part of subscription. First one you see, it's uh, only shown only after onboarding process. And mm. uh, like I said previously, uh, we collect information about what uh, users want to achieve, and see that text. We try to uh, uh, write more um, user friendly and more uh, private and uh, user engagement uh, text so if if they answer i want growth and i want to breastfeeding we we said better understanding of breastfeeding and better understanding of growth so uh, users see the screen that that totally for the users that um, that download the app yeah. So he he see that screen. If he he tap continue, uh, he see uh, the user see the main screen. The mm -hmm. main screen uh, also consists with a three prices. Now you see three prices. What uh, user get with our app? Some social proof of joining and our our uh, average rating. We also um, what difference between basic version and unlimited version uh, for now we also added some feature in the new version we add some uh, paid feature and we uh, in this section we get some more bullet points success story of course and frequently asked question we also add in our screen after go unlimited tab uh, user get on a um, subscription uh, screen and he can buy uh, our subscription. Let me show this mm -hmm. real quick, Andre. Mm -hmm. That way we can kind of see it bigger. So mm -hmm. here's the main screen. Uh, I think I put established breastfeeding. That's probably why. You, you, mm -hmm. the top right. This is this this top language. The header language is based off of what I inputted during the onboarding. Yes. Mm -hmm. The thing I want to point out too, and I think this is can be seen a little bit bigger. And feel free to stop me anytime, but is the per week pricing. I do like that a lot because I'm able to really look through versus like the monthly, which is interesting. But then the per week, I was like, oh my God, it's so much cheaper. And you kind of differentiated all that, even though yearly, monthly, I like that a lot. It It's some hacks because yeah. if you, because if you tap on go unlimited, uh, Apple store, very strict on this. And mm. uh, we should show the year and monthly prices. Okay, right. And so we, we will see that you have the, mm -hmm. the benefits here. So I mm -hmm. like that. And then the social proof. And then here's the sort of like the basic versus unlimited success stories. I let that it's not auto scrolling. I scroll mm -hmm. myself. And then again, frequently asked questions. We'll hit go limited. And then here you can see the different pricing options, I guess, here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's because I, I hit, I was choosing the, the unlimited. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's defaulted. Default, like that. yes. That's actually a great yeah. idea. And uh, go. You should uh, go unlimited and uh, cancel the subscription. You see one more thing. What's that? So fifty nine dollars, and then I yes. say fifty percent. Go. You want me to hit go. go unlimited? Yes, and cancel. Cancel. 
Yeah. And we have pop up. Nice. Return. Are you tracking like how many people are clicking on this, and then go back uh, to hitting unlimited? Uh, we didn't track that because uh, it was very hard to implement that because also yeah, for mm, yes app uh, store, uh, but we definitely uh, should test that. I know one of the things too that I want to point out what the old one did not have was this level up pricing at the very bottom because I did say like hey one of the things that you should always have in your main screen is like an option for me to buy and it was buried before and so this is a new element that I think you guys added here that it's yes. always right mm -hmm. here and it looks beautiful too mm -hmm. okay cool mm -hmm. i'll let you i'll go i'll add your screen back into the stream and if you mm -hmm. want to share anything else uh okay. yes it's uh, two slide holes we have mm -hmm. right. here we go you see my screen yes sir so uh, you talk about dashboard yes we add a uh, purchase button in the main dashboard and what result do we have? Uh, after that changes, we increase our uh, lifetime value. We decrease more than two times our median time to purchase. So That's what great. does it mean? Yes, what does it mean? Uh, people, users start to buy after registration. So yes, uh, some users decline or uh, go away, but that user that uh, go through our funnel actually buy. First one, it was main thing. And second one, look at the mm, uh, one month and six to month proportion. Mm. They're totally different before and after. So we collect uh, more uh, yearly and six month uh, subscriptions. Right, because you didn't even have the six month option before. Yes, you only yes. Had the one month and the, the yearly before. Yes, but, but uh, yes, and but we compare, uh, we had, Yes, uh, there's a. Why do you think detail. that's because the pricing is pretty much the same, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, uh, there's a studies that uh, there when it free option it's easy to choose uh, four uh, four is bad yes yes three three options and uh, uh, you see the value you sh you you should understand what. Uh, what you want to user be done. For example, if you want to user uh, by one month, you should aim and all subscription, all funnel should be aimed on this. If you want your user uh, by 12 months or six months, you should uh, go in that direction. So we aimed on that direction. Yeah, I like it. And, and I, I like how ba based off this data, I'm gonna share mine real quick. I love how this is already defaulted because the things that I've shown in the past is you hit go unlimited and it shows you the pricing, all that stuff. And I like how you have evolved this into, hey, we're gonna select the best value for you so that when you go unlimited, it's always gonna be yearly. And so you'd have to go back and pick maybe the monthly or whatever it is, but all the eyeballs and the nice, graphics are in the six month in the the 12 month versus the yes. one month. you see the green you see everything it just the beauty is in the six and 12 months so mm -hmm. great job on that front thank All you right. thank you sorry I was going back to your screen sorry uh, all right uh, let me get your screen there you go yes my last screen is just only my uh, contact that's all if you have any question well, uh, we have questions yes yes so I have you to reach out to Andre, we'll put that into the show notes as well. And I'll get that going so that the stream isn't going. We have a lot of questions here, but I want to say hi to a few people I missed. Johan, always good to see you, my friend. Uh, Yorsloff is from London. How's it going? Bianca says, nice haircut. Thanks, Bianca. I was able to finally get one. That's why I'm not wearing a hat all the time now. <laughs> so open up a little bit more in California. All right. Andy says, I'm wireframing part of my app. Do you have any advice or recommendations or input when it comes to that part? For what part, Andy? Like tools? I'm actually creating a longer mini series again on how to create an app from like just idea to like all the step by step process. I think when it comes to wireframing, Envision is a great app where you can sort of tap through and show different people. And then you can have people like play around with that Envision on your phone to see where they tap. And then if they're tapping in the right spots that you want. To them to tap in. Andre, you have anything you want to add to that, to Andy? Uh, just use the simple tools that uh, can understand what the user want. Yes. Okay. And then we got questions from Yorschloff. Yorschloff. Am I saying that right? Yaroslav, I think. Okay. All right. I knew you'd get it better than me. 
How did you choose this niche? When did the app launch? iOS versus Android downloads revenue and the 6K showed is that we said it is per month is is the downloads or revenue? Mm. The 6K per month is the, the revenue. Yes, right? yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. 6K per month is the revenue. Yes. Um, we Today we focus only on uh, Apple, but we have uh, Android version. Of course, we support Android version, but unfortunately, uh, the unit of economics uh, not uh, play in the Android version, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, as I said, many tests uh, on uh, monetization side, and uh, we uh, should uh, just look on iOS version. Ah, and how ab about the niche? It's my it just it's my it, it's my story. Uh, it's not it's not my first app. And uh, when my I have my child, my baby, uh, my wife use some of the some of the free uh, apps and it, it was awful uh, mm. and I see I can I can do the be better much better because um, like I said previously uh, all the all apps I think eight or six years old Wow that's crazy okay uh, not, not, not all. Of, co of course not all in in the US they have some also paid version but uh, on different but only in English I think. All right. There's some competitors in the U.S. Leandro, how's it going, my friend? Good to, oh, good to see you. Mr. I'm not even in the Zaggy <laughs> Diaz. All right, well, welcome. Andy says, where did you get your privacy policy terms and conditions? Now, you're from a CFO background, so you're probably picking mm -hmm. particularly more than I am. I just found the template. Andre, where did you got, get your privacy <laughs> policy in terms and conditions? Also, I uh, get in my template, yes. <laughs> yes, we change, we change it uh, after some... Uh, iteration, but yes, you should you should do as easy as possible. Yeah. There is no time to test it and uh, do uh, some hard privacy policy. Uh, maybe your app uh, does need anyone. Yeah, you know, like my wife's a lawyer, so she'd probably recommend finding a lawyer. I just wanted to go for speed, so I found a template online. I yes. looked it obviously, and then I was like, okay, this is good enough for me for now. Okay, what is the CAC of twenty dollars for a single install for a lifetime value? I think that's a great question. Uh, of course, for the lifetime. Yeah. for the subscription how are you calculating lifetime by the way is it just like how many people stay on are you using any tools to calculate lifetime uh we try to use it but for example branch well, of course we have the branch uh mm -hmm. links uh but they cal calculate mm, not perfectly uh, and we try to calculate by ourselves uh you have your installs then you have your uh, subscription that uh, paying users, uh, you know your retention of paying users, and you just calculate them like without uh, any um, commission. For example, without it's clean value without commission of app stores. Got it. Ma manually, unfortunately, for now. Ram asks, are you a solo dev or do you have a team? I have a team. Yes. Uh, do you use cro cross platform framework or rewrite the app for iOS and Android? I think you just have it for iOS, so I'm assuming it's native. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. N native, uh, we uh, we built on Android and iOS. React Native. Yourslav is asking a lot of questions. Now, answer this. This is live. This is on YouTube right now, Andre. So, but do you <laughs> use Motive, paid non-organic installs, or bots for downloads and reviews, or all organic? Uh, not for now. No. And then, what fraction of downloads come from organic searches versus ad-based installs? It's great. Uh, Twenty-five. 25% comes so, from organic? Yes, organic. yes, yes for, from organic. Uh, okay. Because, uh, like I said previously, it's a very competitive market. Yeah, got it. Okay, so most of your downloads are coming from the ad base side of things. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's why you should understand your unit economics and uh, how business model of your app work. Okay, so while I want to talk about the ad base stuff, the what's the best performing? You put in ASA. Obviously, ASO, we know that that's not ad based, but Facebook ads, what are of the two, like which one's best performing for you? Uh, like, of course, uh, Apple search has. Really? Well, not, not of course, yes, Apple search, yes. Uh, for different countries, for example, uh, some Eastern Europe and Russia, uh, Facebook also work. Okay. I like, I like, and are you doing with Apple search ads? Are you, <clears throat> how are you setting it up? What, it, what have you found to be the more, like the, the best performing campaign? So to speak, <laughs> it's um, uh, we have separate um, 
head of marketing that uh, mm. rule that stuff uh, for basics. Um, we use we test different country for the B strategy and for the uh, goal strategy. Uh, for now. Uh, for us, work is the best strategy for a different country. We use, um, we test different keywords. In, for example, in branch, you can also understand the lifetime value of keywords in in particular country. So we choose country, we um, collect keywords, we test them, we understand how CPI, uh, how how high CPI of that particular country, and uh, go of that country or not. Because um, I think we test 30 countries and now we work in some of them. Got it. I love that. And I've heard that too. Are you splitting up the different campaigns by targeting? Are you having a different campaign per country? Yes. Yes, okay. per country. And in, in, in some countries, we have different campaign also. I like that. The With Branch, are you using the paid option? Yes. Of yes. Yes. And you're able to track at a keyword level, like which yes. keyword is the best performance. Yes, yes, but but branch, uh, especially with uh, uh, different uh, to, today's changes, uh, mm -hmm. they um, unfortunately uh, do not track all installs and all purchases. Track. Okay, I love that. Okay, and then we've got Yorkslav says thanks for sharing. So thanks for putting all that together, Andre. Thank and you. Thank thanks you. for all the great questions <laughs> and really pinning down <laughs> Andre on all the numbers. Ram says, are you using any specific analytics service? Uh, we use branch, uh, as, as I said. Uh, of course, we use uh, Firebase uh, in um, in understanding our user and understanding how our users perform. We use Revenue Care. Um, yes, okay. yes, we use. What was the last one? Uh, Re Revenue Care. Oh, revenue for, care. Yes, yes, because uh, you should understand. You should. Hmm. We try to implement uh, subscription and change uh, from different form to form. It's easy to use some services for that and track uh, revenue. And then Olivia says, "How do you optimize ad spend? Are you changing the targeting, changing the keywords?" Uh, in uh, Apple Search. Sure. Where or Facebook? Let's start with Apple Search and let's let's move on to Facebook. <laughs> Uh, in Apple search, uh, we're targeting on uh, specific keywords. And what we test, uh, we just, I think it, it tool, uh, that tool is not so um, sophisticated. Uh, mm -hmm. You have only, uh, only screens and you can change the screens and you can change test countries. You can test your strategy. You can change your B strategy or different strategy. You can uh, choose what keyword you should use. For example, some keywords are expensive, some keywords are cheap. That's basically it. You should know and understand the country level because country to country is very different, very mm -hmm. different. Uh, on Facebook, it's I think it's much harder because Facebook have many tools to uh, to uh, to use uh, to to um, optimize your ad spend. Uh, also, for us is work. What 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 for us is working? Of course, we uh, test our creatives. For example, video, pictures, uh, on audience, lookalike uh, campaign we tested. Uh, but for us, um, it's different for country to country, and that's why we uh, have only some countries that we use from Facebook. It for for us it was very expensive. And we don't cover our cost for acquisition. All right, I like it. And then Mr. <laughs> he said, hey, he likes the content, but the best part is me trying to pronounce your name. Well, thank you. I think the best part, Andre, of any YouTube channel is are my jokes. So <laughs> as you answer this question, I'm gonna prepare my joke for you. But Rowan says, if you're using Revenue Cat, you're supposed to disclose purchases in the app privacy nutrition labels. Is that true? Mm, let me, I, I don't understand the question. Yeah, Romain, maybe you can add a little bit more. Uh, yes, yeah. Bread, please. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, cool. I don't have my bell with me, but I will go with it. It is in my backpack, so I'll get it for the next one. All right, Andre, before we go into the app audit of Ping Me, I got a joke for you. And it's all, since you're a numbers guy, I thought it was like, okay, let's do a math type of joke, okay? <laughs> I'll try, okay. Okay, <laughs> let's see. All right, for those of you guys watching, remember, 
10 if you think it's super lame, like a dad joke, because that's what I am, a dad. And then one, <laughs> if you think it's super funny. All right, science makes me numb, but math, uh, science puns makes me numb. Science puns make me numb, but math puns make me number. You like that? All right. <laughs> Uh, all right. Andy says, how much do you spend a month in analytics tracking respectively? Mm, not so many. I think it's hundreds of dollars. I, uh, I think branch is uh, something about $100 uh, and uh, Firebase Analytics about 150 Not so many. And it seems like it is. It has to be these, like all these tools into one branch for a certain thing, Firebase for a certain thing, and then it's there's no like on in like all in one type of platform that can do yes, everything yes. you want to do. So yeah, I know people you, you, ask, but it's I don't think it exists. You should choose your one because it's different uh, aims for this platform. Yeah. And then what's up, Rudy? Good to see you. And then I think we're good. All right. If you guys have got questions, let me know. And if you want us to audit our app and see some of the revenue growth, Andre, was it worth it getting all that that app audit for you? Yes, I'm of cool. course. Of you course. have to say yes. Okay. All right. Yes. I'm on live stream. Okay, of course. <laughs> at masters.com slash audit and if you if i did audit your app be like andre andre emailed us and said hey look man we we, we thank you for the audit we seen some success here's some numbers and I, I love getting those emails so if you want us to take a look at your app go to at masters.com slash audit that once again is at masters.com slash audit and we'll take a look on this youtube live stream as well all right and i'll be a lot nicer moving forward hopefully all right ping me second phone number is the app that we got all right andre i'm gonna kick it off with a few things that i'm noticing and i'll let you take over mm -hmm. this text is way too small like i always say lead with what like andre has done talk about your main benefit add some social proof and then here it's like dude this is blown up this is so small i can't see all right i said i'll be nicer but i'm not going to be how about that <laughs> would you have anything any comments on here uh Yes, uh, you t you talk about the small text. Yes, yes, nothing right. to add. Yeah, Connie. So this is Connie app, and she put this in there. I think you know when you want to go after these type of keywords, these are pretty pretty competitive in my eye. And so what I would do from an ASO perspective and what we have done, Andre, is kind of like what you talked about, target different countries as well. And so we've been localizing, and I don't know any of this, but for one of our clients, and I have a, a video that I'm going to create for the academy, but essentially using the different tools out there to localize. And I think that's how I would start utilizing this because this is very, very competitive, but you can imagine people in other countries are looking for a US based number. So it might be more accurate to go after international countries, not just the US, but this is pretty competitive. So be careful with this. And then for those, sorry, go ahead, Andre. Yes, what I want to add, um, I try to understand business model. Um, I tr of course, I have installed this app. Uh, for me, it's hard. I don't know how it's on, but in uh, in in, uh, in analytics they show that have I think twenty k per month. Mm. Uh, it's, it's very good. M maybe I don't understand it, something first and second one. There is a uh, too many uh, bad reviews. You should work on that. Yeah. Uh, in in global in global scale because I think uh, three uh, average rating. It's 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 very low. Did you say that you looked up the app on, and you seen that it's making $20,000 a month? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing too. Here it is. On mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. So, and look at the ratings uh, and the reviews. It, it's, it's very bad uh, yeah. when users uh, see that and they see the review that app doesn't work or um, it's very hard to promote them. Yeah. I mean, the numbers are good. I think what yes. I would try to do as well is you look, you're making pretty good money is also, the, you know, I always say this, but the Spanish Mexico localization is indexed by the U S app store. And so have a different title, have a different subtitle, have all different keywords in English. If you're trying to target the, mm -hmm. the U S market. All right. Shall we take a look at the app? Yes. Let's do it. Here it is. So get unlimited access now, remove my order mark. I don't, this is the right app, right? This is the, this is oh, this is the wrong app. My fault. Yes. 
it's gonna say is like what does this even mean okay yeah mm -hmm. so yes, this one i didn't like how they they're asking for a lot you can't see it on my screen but they're asking for my location which i'll allow while using the app and then they're asking me to notify push notifications i think it's too much asking that once look you're making 20 grand so who am i to say but i think it's a little bit too much i would ask at the right time. Hey, we need your mm -hmm. location because of X, Y, and Z. Would you allow it? They say yes. Then you ask for the next one. We need to enable push notifications or don't miss any calls, right? Then do mm -hmm. that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, as you said, it, it's better to show the pre, 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 pre preparation screen. Okay. And then now it's get a new number verification. Select the app website to validate. Okay, and then I can get a new number, I guess, mm -hmm. for verification. It's a little confusing, but I don't know exactly what it means. But I guess I have to get a new number. That's what I'm here for. Uh, one of the notches, there is no any onboarding. Uh, if I yeah. if I don't know what, what for the app, uh, I totally was missed. Yeah, and I thought these were already selected, but they're not. So I'm hitting it. Uh, okay. You know, I hate this. Be like, please register or log in to proceed. Well, let me register and log in. I have to hit okay. Okay, good. Uh, validate by SMS, validate by phone call. Okay. <laughs> the, the flow is a little bit crappy. I won't enter my phone number here on this live stream, but okay. It looks like I can't change anything without having this. Yes. Validated. Yes. Uh, th that's why I, I also can, cannot uh, log in uh, in Russia, unfortunately. But I, tr but I try. Okay, let me try this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While I hide my phone, I will validate by SMS. Doing this all for you, Connie. <laughs> Just so we can see the pricing screen. Mm, okay, they, they tell me how much they're charging. Let me... Just trying to be careful not to reveal too much information. All right. It's a little wordy, but all right. I think this could be improved, but hey, you're making 20,000. So let's see what happens next. Let me make sure I see the screen first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can invite a friend. So I'm going to skip that. And then I see my price, mm -hmm. some of the pricing here. So it looks like it's. Targeting like maybe non-US countries just because it's making it easy with PayPal, all this stuff. The fact that they're able to get away with this in the App Store is a little bit surprising, but I guess recharge with App Store and then they allowed me to recharge with a bunch of different things like with PayPal and stuff, which is crazy. Good job, Con, in getting away with this. I don't know where I can't get a new number, but okay. So let me hit 100. And I don't know what I'm getting with this recharge. I thought I'd get a second phone number, but I guess I'm done with this recharge. Oh, that's what I was doing, trying to recharge anyways. Now let's see if I can get a second phone number. All right. All right, well, now my phone number's on there. All right, cool. <laughs> Let me <laughs> go through some of this stuff. Get a new phone number. I can get one in the States. Area code, choose plan. All right, here, let me show this. Uh, so kind of confusing some of this stuff but andre what i'm sensing is this seems like a great market because even with a not a like optimized pricing play pricing page not an optimized like onboarding flow a lot of errors that we're seeing they're already mm -hmm. making 20 grand a month so it seems like for me you could better optimize this pricing page to to show me what i'm getting for each plan but you're doing pretty well with a pretty unoptimized page <laughs> and everything else. That's what I'm taking yes. away from it. Like, seems like a good market. Mm -hmm. Too many texts. And of, co of course, we don't know the costs. Maybe for the developers also cost uh, to buy the number, for example. Yeah, it's $4.99. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. $4.99 a yeah. month for mm -hmm. me. And they, they've got some costs there. Yeah. Yes, yes. We don't know that, unfortunately. Yeah, I think a nice little table would be beneficial here. What's the difference between this plan versus this voice plan? Yes versus pay-as-you-go type of plan too. Yes, too many texts. Uh, users do not read anything. Uh, just tap, tap. Okay, cool. Let's see if there's any questions here. Uh, I think we're good. Oh, okay. We enter this. Johan, you can join a little bit late, but 
Andre is at $6,000 a month. Uh, and then Ram says, Andre, looking at your app's supported languages, any plans to expand more? Have you researched the Asian markets? Uh, it's very hard to support uh, different languages because uh, you should uh, know the country that you enter. It's not easy. You edit language and uh, uh, enter the country. Yes, we have the plans, but for uh, but the market that we're in, uh, we have five languages before. Russia, English, German, French. Uh, that market is very large. And for us, it's uh, definitely enough because uh, our competitors, good competitors, uh, enter only English language and English market. Yes, we uh, we definitely think about that, but not for now. Yeah. I mean, it could be we something to consider. What I, what I recommend to, sorry, Andre, what I recommend mm -hmm. to is like, just starting to with the ASO localization and then figuring out if you need to do the in-app. Cause are you talking about you, you do the in-app localization too, right? Yes, because we test the Asian market without localization. They, it didn't work for us. Ah, got it. Without actually yes, localizing yes. the in-app stuff. Yes, yes, uh, because uh, you should understand your uh, users. It's new moms, they don't, uh, they have to know uh, different languages and they overwhelmed and they should understand um, the app clearly. That's why for us it, without uh, uh, without supported language in app doesn't work, doesn't work. And then Steven says, I wonder if calling, if call and texting is being indexed from a subtitle, I guess is not. So this is just the ASO thing that he was referring to Steve. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Wi-Fi call might be. I mean, I think this counts as a space. It it would be interesting to to just sort of split it out versus putting it. I know a dash, like if you put a dash instead, Connie would probably work better, and it it would index call and texting together. But because you put an ampersand, it might just consider this. Apple might consider this as one string. Just FYI, you know anything about that, Andre? Like if. Uh, if some uh, some some uh, some of our uh, companies said that uh, it, it doesn't matter what you uh, okay. implement with, between the words. Oh, okay. So maybe call and texting are. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's good to know. All right, let's move on to the last app. Before we moved on, I'm gonna give you one more joke. I got I found a bunch. Okay. All right, I like this one. This made my wife. My my wife. My my wife never laughs at any of these. It's just me and my son <laughs> really falling. All right, here's a good one. Andre, what did what did the Spartacus say when the lion ate his wife? What did Spartacus <laughs> say when the lion ate his wife? I don't know. Yeah, you don't. Well, nothing. <laughs> he was gladiator. <laughs> you like that one? All right. Where's all the comments? Where's ones and tens? Come on, guys. It, it takes me a long time. No, I'm <laughs> I'm certain through bad jokes to find you the greatest. All right, last one is from. Uh, James, which feature should be free and which ones should be premium, James says, for his Twitter app. Right off the bat, I think when I see this hashtag, and maybe because I'm in the space, James, I think like hashtags, like, you know, the Instagram hashtags for likes. I don't think Twitter widget. So I know uh, maybe a bird, right? Like a Twitter bird. I like the Tweetbot just came out with the new one. So look at like what is natively or what is more representative of Twitter than just a normal hashtag. All right. So Twitter widget live. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, custom theme. I like it. Uh, I don't like these colors. They make it hard to read. Sometimes I want to go to yours. I feel like what you do a really good job of Andre is they're all soft colors. And what this one feels like, it's like soft, hard, soft, hard, soft, hard. And it, it's messing with my eyes in a way. And I think they are too similar. Maybe some different uh, social approve uh, or different. They are uh, the same, only uh, different text above them. Yeah, and it, you're using the same type of screenshots. Which, if you look at other theme apps, like maybe even Widget Smith, like let's let's take a look at that and see what they are, and then we'll get into what you should have the free and then paid. All right, let's look at Widget Smith real quick. I got to get that guy on. I mean, he's gone bonkers. Yeah, see, so you kind of see the different elements that you have, right? So you kind of get a sense of what it looks like. And then here, 
on yours, James, it's all pretty much, I think you could do a better job of some of the customizations rather than this. Let's go into and and the text. Uh, yes, uh, text, uh, small text. I don't see num. I'm full. Large text, large uh, numbers. I see it. Right. But small text, I don't see it. What for it? Right. Right. It, it looks too small. And then maybe having yes. the tweets and where yes. it shows up in your homepage might be interesting too. Okay. So I have to log into Twitter right now. So let me do that. Let's see if this works. Okay. So yeah, I'm logged in. You've got the premium stuff. You've got a pricing page. Looks like everybody's doing it now. All right, go premium. I like it. Unlock premium features of Twidget. Live refresh. Now, see, when I say go premium, and I think you 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 sort of changed this too, Andre, and you maybe you've already had this, but I like how you said, you know, with yours, I think I put like breastfeeding, monitor breastfeeding. So like better monitor best breastfeeding, but nobody wants to go premium, right? Like premium just means I have to fork over money in my eye. So think about like, what does this unlock? Like what's the main mm -hmm. benefit from unlocking this? And that, that will get you a better sense of like, rather than just saying go premium. So I changed the time, the, the very headline live timeline for you fresh. Okay, cool. Okay. And then no ads. Love it. I think the pricing is a little bit, I don't know. I think you can do more. I think you could charge more. Kind of like what Andre said, like, right? Don't be afraid of charging more. Isn't that what you said? Yes, and test that. Yeah, and test. I think this is too cheap in my eye. So if I'm if I'm a hardcore, because what Andre said, look, I want a hardcore person, right? Like I want the power user and that I mean, use the onboarding process to make sure I filter for the power user. And what I think most people want is probably a power. So 99 a month, you're probably getting more on the lifetime, James, but you can probably charge five but ten dollars a year. I mean, I would try to play around with this. Uh, unfortunately, with that price, you can afford to uh, pay for paid user because mm -hmm. uh, channels is to have, for example, I found a buck and a dollar in the US for the paid for the only for install. How you the economic doesn't work on that prices. Agreed. And then, uh, right, I guess I'd have to add the widget, but for the features, I don't know what would be free. Let's see if I can do this properly. Oh, I'm on the, let's see, this, this new iOS has it. Okay, Twidget. Twidget. Looks cool. Mm -hmm. Looks cool. I, the thing is, I don't, once you, be, once you're in Twidget, you can't really go back, right? Like, there's no need for me to go back in, right? I don't really need to come back into the app. So like, how do you get me to buy when I have this already? Does it not uh, refresh? You know what I mean? Like, I think that's the, the hardest part of being a t widget app is how do you get them to buy even though it's already there? Like, do I need to go back into the app? Like, I'd probably never even need to go back to the app if I already have this. Uh, they uh, they said uh, he said that uh, the Twitter feed uh, thirty minutes below the actual Twitter feed. That's why you should pay. Oh, okay, yeah, and I think I don't know if you can do this from a developer standpoint, but I would try to have some way of having like, hey, buy this app, go premium type of thing. Let's mm -hmm. let's see if one of my other apps that I like has this. Uh, let me. Okay, cool. Let me remove this. Cool. Let's go to motivation. This motivation app that I have. All right, let's see. Well, and see what they do because I'm on the free plan. All right, so I click this. See, this goes into the app itself, which I prefer. And maybe you, that's what you can do as well. My body is my best friend. So I'm going back into the app, and then now I can subscribe if I want to. But when you, you, James, what you're doing is I'm just seeing the you're taking me to Twitter rather than taking me to the app. So it might be interesting to, you know, like be a Twitter feed within the app so that there's a reason for me to come back into the app and subscribe because right now you're just taking me to Twitter and I don't, there's no need for me to subscribe. Any other things you want to add? Uh, also, I'm afraid. What if the Twitter made the widget? Yeah. Then you're by. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. That's true. All right. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
Andre, this uh, is awesome. and also also I want to uh, they ask what about um, about the user what should I what should be uh, pay and what uh, what should be free I think you should um, learn the users I should all should be free and understand user what features users use most frequently and that uh, understand the feature that you should uh, take on a premium. Yeah, and the, just like Andre split it up with his, you know, he didn't put it in a big old like the he didn't put it in a like a table, which you know I've seen other people do. I'm trying to find a nap if it had a table, but I think what you're missing is I didn't know what was free. So like put free here's what it has paid here's what you're getting and here where you can play. So I think mm -hmm. differentiate kind of like what I told Andre in the very I don't know what's free already and what's paid. So, and then reading through that text, Andre looked at it, but every 30 minutes on the free tier, but that didn't like, that didn't register. <laughs> okay. I didn't read. All right. You guys like the gladiator joke. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you. I like that one too. Romaine says, I like your visual. So here, look at that. I'll give you more of the visual Romaine. All right. Thank Andre, you. <laughs> how did you test? Did you test pricing? If so, using what tool? Uh, we test pricing, but without using to we just change the price and look what uh, conversion rate and what amount of the uh, revenue we have. Yeah, that's because be, um, also you should understand when you're testing, you should have uh, um, users, uh, big amount of users to understand. It's really uh, the case of testing. I think without 5,000 users on each test, uh, it's ridiculous to do without that. Okay. Because test will be uh, insufficient. We got to run our next call soon. Meeting with our mastermind from the App Masters Academy right after this. But Branded Brothers Gaming says, according to your experience, what's a decent number of conversion rate between impressions and users downloading the product on iOS? Mm, impressions, uh, sixty-five percent for us. Impressions, download? Uh, impressions to tap sixty-five and uh, uh, to tap and to download. I think. 15. Is this on search ads or organic? Organic and search ads, uh, um, it's not a big difference for us. Okay. Uh, cool. I think we should get, after all the changes. Well, so like what I've seen on my experience from conversion rate impressions to actual like installs, because the organic impressions are usually higher and then sometimes it shows, I'd normally see around five to 10%. I don't know, Andre, if you're thinking about product page views to downloads, yes. but I, th that's why I, that, and that is where the 65 to 70% yes. is like 70%. So, all right, Andre, after all the changes made in the app store page, did you see improvements in your conversion rate? Mm, like uh, all the screenshot changes? Yes, uh, but uh, we should test because I see some uh, uh, changes, but maybe it was after uh, changes in our, uh, ASO or uh, Apple search um, ads. It's hard to d differentiate, it's hard to test. <laughs> for for our size of uh, app, uh, we should just do and feel what we should do. Yeah. Not, not, not as, yes, we see increase, but it's hard to, uh, it's hard to know it's exactly without, uh, with changes of the um, screen shots. All right, guys, one last joke before we take it away. It's kind of morbid, so I got to warn you for that. I like the joke. Uh, my son liked the joke. My wife did not like this joke, but I'm going to hit it to you anyways. The inventor of the Velcro has died. The inventor of Velcro has died. Rip. All right. Well, the app is called Super Mama. Go check it out into the app stores. As If you're a new parent and you really want to keep track of your baby, go check it out, Super Mama. Just search for it on iOS. You'll find it there. Andre, if the audience wants to connect with you in any other way, you want to send them anywhere else? Uh, it will be better to correct me in email. I think you said about that. And uh, right, drop me a line in Telegram, for example. Yeah. I'm also glad to, to answer a question. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. That's it. Thank you guys for joining this week. Next week, we got Haim from V7Dev, one of our favorite people. We're going to talk about how do you take your app idea into a full-blown app startup and really take you step-by-step step and don't make these critical mistakes. We're going to talk about the critical technical things that you can really leverage within the app as well, and then re really building the right features for your app startup. So from app idea to actual app startup. 
So join us next week for that. And Andre, thank you so much for coming on and doing this, man. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, your audience. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Bianca, Joe, all the regulars, Johan, Branded Brothers Gaming. Thank you guys so much for joining. I will see you guys next week.